Symbiosis. I don't have to give a synopsis because Picard's going to do it for me. The sun in the Delos system is undergoing large scale magnetic field changes, producing violent, gigantic flares. Now we shall. We're studying this at close range, even though we shall be running at full deflectors. The closeness of this event and its severity will create problems. Intense magnetic fields have a disruptive effect on the electrical systems. Therefore, we can expect communication interruptions as well as potential temporal loss of other systems and the caution we are now going to yell it's odd how he spits out so much exposition right away. I would say this is sort of a clumsily written episode in general. So the Enterprise is going out to look at a star, right? So they get in real close. Wesley overreacts, of course, when he goes. I know it's not going to be the focus of the episode, but even that premise was not exciting. And it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to send a manned vehicle that close. They could easily use an unmanned vehicle. And the distress it causes to the shield and everyone's getting all tense, it's artificial tension in terms of writing. So while they're doing this, they receive a distress signal from a freighter. He doesn't seem to understand the situation that he's in, or even how his own ship works. The Enterprise crew getting so annoyed at him was a little over the top. Maybe it's because they know what's coming up in the rest of this episode. We're going to lock on the track to beam and pull you out of orbit. Hey, that, that's great. So they're going to get the crew off, and they get them all set up, but the crew beams over their cargo instead, and they try and beam them over again. So they pull over four people. Two are from Brekka, and two are from Onara, but they both possess some sort of electro power. Yeah, it made me think of King Kong and King Kong vs. Godzilla. <laughs> Tasha is getting so turned on by them fighting with each other. And then when she's walking with Riker, every line she says to him, I interpreted as her saying it sexually. I wonder how it evolved. I wonder how much power our guests can produce. It's an interesting ability. The question is, how do I defend against it? Do you think our visitors pose a threat? I don't know. But if they do, I'd better be ready for it. So the Onarans say that the cargo is medicine for a lethal plague, which is the only hope for their people. So Beverly does an examination, and the Breckians don't have any disease, but neither do the Onarans. But they have all the symptoms of a disease, and they're obviously going through symptoms of withdrawal. The Breckians do not want to give them the medicine. I wasn't paying too much attention because it wasn't very interesting. So they finally agree to two doses. They say there's four billion doses in that container. So in case you haven't been paying attention, Beverly comes right out and says the core message of this whole episode, right to your face. She definitely plays a larger role than she usually does. And everyone on their world is a drug addict. The Unarans were all sick from a plague, and the Felicium was the cure, but they didn't realize that it completely cured them. What they think of as being sick is their withdrawal symptoms. Picard starts talking about the Prime Directive. He says, It is not our mission to impose Federation or Earth values on any others in the galaxy. Also, the way he talks about that, as if all of Earth has the same values, I feel like that's a problem in itself. It's almost as if whoever was writing this episode hadn't watched any other episodes before it. You violated the Prime Directive of the Edo. You deliberately interfered with their laws. Just hearing him talk like that when he himself personally has violated the Prime Directive, not to mention Riker doing it. Removing any of these people against their will would be a violation of several Starfleet regulations, not the least of which would be the Prime Directive. I realize that, Mr. Data. Tasha's probably done it too, probably bred with a whole bunch of other races. They need to have a higher council that they can appeal to for situations where it potentially would be a legitimate course of action to violate the Prime Directive. It seems like the Enterprise in particular uses the Prime Directive to twist their logic in the way that best suits them at that moment. Wesley has a PSA moment about why drugs are bad. I was waiting for McGruff to show up. It doesn't feel artificial until the drug wears off. Then you pay the price. Before you know it, you're taking the drug not to feel good, but to keep from feeling bad. And that's the trap. All you care about is getting your next dosage. Nothing else matters. I guess I just don't understand. Wesley, I hope you never do. Buy my coloring book to see what happens to Wesley next. It becomes more and more obvious how many drugs Tasha has done in her life. <laughs> When the conversation is over, it is very obvious Data's gonna go try out drugs. <laughs> it's clearly part of the human experience. So one of the Onarans says, Give us a shuttle. 
and he grabs him and does his electro power. Riker's facial expression is pretty good. So the Breckens reveal that they know they're causing the Onarans to remain addicted and they don't want to not give them the drugs because then it'll break their dependency. And that drug is the only thing they manufacture on their planet. That's what their entire economy is based on. The Onarans say they only have three ships to go between the two planets. The amount of food, the amount of clothing, the amount of basic necessities would fill up more than three ships. The relationship between the Ornarans and the Breckens reminds me again of the Eloy and the Morlocks in the Time Machine, where the Morlocks provide everything that the Eloy need to survive, but at the same time they eat the Eloy. So then Picard, again, twists the Prime Directive to refuse to fix their ships, because then he says that would mean we get involved. Yeah, he's interpreting it however it works out for him. He makes it even worse by then accusing the Breckians when they get mad at him for doing it. He says, You did not think so when it worked in your favor. He willfully and consistently uses the Prime Directive to his own ends. They send the Onarans back and force him to go through withdrawal, and Picard acts all oh, magnanimous about it. I like how the ending is ambiguous as to whether things are actually going to work out or not. So after Picard's whole Prime Directive bullshit, he just hammers that point home again. Beverly, the Prime Directive is not just a set of rules. It is a philosophy, and a very correct one. I like how he says it's a very correct philosophy. Mansplaining to Beverly. This episode made me like Beverly even less than I already do. Her viewpoint is valid, but I don't need to keep shoving it in my face. I think it would be good if both planets just died. The Ornarans, since they're supposed to be the more backward people, they all dress just like hillbillies with overalls and weird clothes that looks like it's kind of patchwork together even though it's all the same color. Just like the whole message of the episode, it feels very on the nose, lacking of creativity. Very, very heavy handed, building very heavily on the crack epidemic of the late 80s and early 90s, which really dates this episode. I would give this episode a D plus, a potentially interesting moral conflict at the center of the story, but everything is so simplistic, none of the characters are likable at all, the whole situation is uninteresting, a very bland and forgettable episode. I would give this one a straight D. It's too simple, it's tied to the issues and society of the time, it really dates the episode. It's a drug episode, I might as well admit, I did a bunch of crack to get ready for this episode. <laughs> 